freaking first cut. Golly. Welcome to the First Cup Podcast. I'm Rick Gaiman, and this is your round one recap for this week's American Express. Joining me to break it all down, Mark Immelman is here. Happy Thursday, Mark. Happy Thursday to you, Rick, and I guess happy Thursday as Thursday to everyone in Palm Springs. I mean, how good are those conditions to play in? It's idyllic, isn't it? It was birdie bonanza across three different golf courses all day long. The stadium course played two shots under par. The Nicholas tournament course, even easier, 3.3. La Quinta, even easier than that, four and a half strokes under par. So, yes, uh, pars were not good enough, Mark, and even just a few birdies, not good enough. You had to go pretty low here. Yeah, and look, just to put this um, into context, you know, I've been out there for this event and I've seen these perfect conditions. And, you know, it's not just that there's no wind. You know, the golf courses are always immaculate. There's no rough and they're dormant rough if you're in there. The biggest challenge is that you've got uneven lies because the ball perks up on that dormant Bermuda so well. So you can hit anything off there. And then the bunkers are nice and firm. So you can, they don't spin much from memory, but you can, you know, you can play offense out of the sand. So, um, I always thought that, you know, maybe I can go out there and play pretty well in those conditions too. Well, no, not so much. You still got to hit your golf ball around those places because even at La Quinta, it's kind of intimate and, and you feel hemmed in by those eucalyptus trees. But if you're driving it well, those guys get after it. If you're a little errant, you're going to have a handful. Same thing at the Nicholas Tournament course and certainly at the stadium, which has just got like peril on every, every side of the fairway. As of this moment, 132 of the 156 golfers in the field this week are under par. And there's a lot to cover here. Mark, we'll, we'll try to do our best right out of the gate this morning. Xander Shoffley put his stamp on this event. He played La Quinta. It was a bogey-free 64 highlighted by an eagle on 11. That is the par 5. As of this moment, he's two shots off the lead, which is 10 under. Now, obviously, we've got guys at a bunch of different golf courses, but Xander Shoffley seems like he's going to be in the mix throughout the week. Well, he was sort of one of those guys that everyone thought that were going to be in the mix before the event, right? And so he's just playing true to form. Southern California guy in Southern California has been playing well coming in. Has had a good record here. And you think you think of names that you just throw out there to say, okay, if I'm betting, this is a somewhat safe bet that they're going to do well. Xander, Cantley, amongst others, you know, you just know that they're going to be around the place. And, and when he got out, out there, Look, it's it's always, it's a comfy start at La Quinta. The first hole is just kind of a straightaway par four. You find the fairway, you got some sort of wedge in there, so it's a, a soft handshake. And, you know, you got to be precise, but you're going to get yourself a look. And if you can drain the first one, you get a little momentum going on. And then the tough stretch of the golf course is as you make the loop, 10, 11, and 12, they're sort of tight and they curve in both directions. And, man, he got busy through there too. So, it was just the kind of day that you expect, but I think highlighted really by what he did across the turn of the day. Well, anywhere Xander Shoffley goes, Patrick Cantlay not too far behind. He himself posted an eight under 64 at La Quinta. And Mark, I started adding it up. I needed fingers, toes. I needed a couple of friends, but I got there. Last 13 rounds for Patrick Cantlay at this event. He is 66 under par. <laughs> Lacey certainly likes to make birdies at. Well, from just down the road, went to school just a couple hours down the road, UCLA. It's like a home game, really. I think the only place that could be more of a home game, perhaps, would be uh, Riviera, because he went to college just around the corner. Um, but just he's so reliable. He drives the ball so well, hits the ball heavy, um, distance control is perfect. And to me, it's, you know, he's he's always had the game. Everyone's known that. But he's taken the leadership sort of a role on the tour, despite what everyone had to say about him with Hatgate at the Ryder Cup and all that sort of stuff. You know, he was drawing the ire of most people, but he's stepped up and he's taken a front seat and now he's involved with the decision making and he's a player rep. And, you know, he's just almost to me taking another step in what is a pretty healthy dose of self-belief. He knows he's got the game, but now he's acting like it too. And, uh, 
64. I don't think that's the last 64 he's going to shoot this week, to be honest. Boy, well, uh, amongst a lot of the La Quintas, a lot of the Nicholas tournament courses, there were two stadium course rounds that stood out here on Thursday. One was from Hayden Springer. One was from Scott Stallings. Let's start with Scott Stallings. Eight under 64 that Hot was highlighted by a pair of birdies at four and five, three in a row at seven, eight, and nine. He didn't even really do that much damage on his second nine mark. Played that just two under par, but uh, certainly plenty out of the gate to get us on an early 59 watch and for him to go out and post a 64 at the most difficult course of the day. Absolutely. And I was coming from lessons to uh, my home club to uh, watch a little golf there, and I was listening to the PGA Tour radio boys my former colleagues and Bill Rosinski was on the call and on the final hole at par four, um, Stallings just trimmed the edge of the hole really. And then Bill drops this nugget that I was like, holy cow, that he had 15 one putt greens today. That is just stupid. Um, look, he's a good player. He's proved that he's won. Um, he's made it to the tour championship. Uh, form sort of fell on hard times a little bit here of late. Um, but golly, what a start in 15 one-putt greens. And to get almost the leg up on the stadium course, because everyone knows that when you go through there, that may be sort of the equalizer as one of the courses. But now he goes from there to La Quinta and then to Nicholas, I believe the uh, rotation is. So goodness gracious me, he must be feeling like a million dollars right now. If you liked the 30 that Scott Stallings went out in. Let me offer you a 29 that Hayden Springer went out in. And he did put one bogey on the card late, a, a hiccup at 18, a, a five there, but it's still an eight under 64 mark. This is his fifth career PGA Tour start, now with full status from the Corn Ferry Tour. So, oh boy, that would be a pretty nice start to a career. Yeah, these boys are good, huh? Um, I, I'm wondering... Um, you know, with all the live speak and you see these guys coming through from the Corn Ferry Tour and they're good. I mean, if you can win on the Corn Ferry Tour, then you're ready to play. And if you graduate uh, through that top few, you know you're good. And and then I hear all the conversation about John Rahm and his live team and that Caleb Surratt, um, young kid from Tennessee, college kid, that he might be on the team. If I was Rahm, I'd like, holy cow. I mean, Surratt is talented. But these corn fairy guys, um, I, I know that maybe Andy Ogletree in years past had been like, oh, well, whatever. But it's amazing how ready they come to play. And it's amazing how good they are. And um, even though, you know, sort of through through Q school, he, um, Springer is just so, they, they're just so well-rounded and just so ready. And, and, and they come out and, you know, in years past where it seemed like the players always had to sort of serve their apprenticeships. Now they're like, Hey, I can hit the ball at 185 miles an hour off the tee. I do this so I can compare myself to Rory on my launch monitor or whatever. And they're like, well, you know, the data says I can play. Then they get out there, get a bit of an, get on a bit of a hot streak. And the next thing they, they are part of the storyline. Yeah, certainly is part of the storyline. Now the, the round of the morning, maybe a little bit of a surprise from the Ryder cup captain. Yeah. For Team USA, Zach Johnson shot a 62 mark out in 29. Birdies on 11, 14, and 17. This was pretty out of the blue. Uh, well, not yes. Well, given form, but if it was <laughs> yeah. if, if it was a course that Zach Johnson was going to be a member at for the rest of his life, I would think this would be the perfect place for him. And it's not that long. It's the shortest of the three venues. Um, he's accurate off the tee, always has been. It's that tight baby draw. And you put a wedge in his hand and perfect greens, he's going to have himself a whole lot of fun. And 62 was a whole lot of fun. Now, look, there's a lot of golf left, but I can't. I don't believe the conditions are regressing. And this is the kind of round where Zach Johnson, who's always been that dogged sort of a guy, and he's up for the battle, I think he's got a taste. You know, he's got that taste in the mouth and perhaps... He just builds on this. Um, but again, if there's one of the three courses he was going to thrive on, I would say La Quinta would be the one given how it's set up and how it plays into his wedge skill. It wasn't the only 10 under 62 of the day. We will get to the other one, plus the notables that happened a little bit later in the day. But first, we're going to take a quick break and hear a word from our partners. 
We well, you need your sports news anywhere. We've got breaking news to bring you. Then get your sports anytime you want them. Big trade news overnight to discuss. Because we know you need sports all the time. A lot of movement in the rankings this week. A legend adds to their legacy. We're bringing you that breaking news right here on HQ. CBS Sports HQ, anywhere, anytime, all the time. And we're back, Mark. The other 10 under par at La Quinta went to Alex Nord. And this was kind of the, a tale of three different rounds for him. He started on the second nine and he got out in an absolute flurry. Five under through his first four holes. He was seven under through his first seven. Then he made a double and racked up four pars in a row, which you cannot do at this event. But that's okay. Because the day finished up with birdies on four, five, six, eight, and nine. That's five of his last six. That's a real roller coaster. Yeah, <laughs> I know it's, a, and it, it comes from a guy who's hardly a roller coaster sort of a personality. You know, ordinarily his game is very reliable. It's a pretty reliable fade shot. He does things his own way, and you know he can shoot low. He can get busy, but it's not the kind of guy that's going to take you on one of those like Spethian sort of a days. So it was a bit odd, um, but he was just more of the same. He's obviously striking the golf ball well. He got a number of good looks. I mean, what I saw on TV, he was hitting the ball the right distance every single time. And that is a measure to me of what the golf swing is like and, and what the form is like. And these guys, if, it hit, if they hit in the ball the right distance, then they get good proximity numbers. And then if you've got to beat on the greens, well, you know, 62 becomes a possibility. Two guys who have been dealing with injury back in action. We saw Will Zalatoris a little bit recently, but Daniel Berger making his debut for the first time in a year and a half. Mark, they played together and they both shot 68. That's four under par at the stadium course. Yeah. Um, and I got to tell you, it's good to see Bug Daniel Berger back. Um, it's obviously good to see Will Zalatoris back. Um, Will to me looked pretty clean. Um, there were one or two balls that he hit that looked like they came out left of what he was intending to, and he was sort of fighting off a bit of a draw. But I got to say this about Daniel Berger I know he hasn't won a major, I know he's won what like three or four events on tour. Um, but the guy is elite. Here's a guy who hasn't played competitively for a long while. What's that over a year and a half, you say it is? And who knows how much he's actually played given um, the procedure, the surgery he had. But every swing I saw him make today, I mean, he looked like he was right on top of the thing. The ball was struck well. He had that same cut shot going on. He's added a little trajectory to the ball because ordinarily the fade he used to hit was quite flat. And I looked at this guy and I'm like, he hasn't missed a beat. And so I, I was like, wow. Um, it was not surprising because I know he's good. But it was very, very impressive looking for a guy who has been very lightly run. A couple of notables here. Justin Thomas, a 7 under 65 at La Quinta. I think that he is entering whatever you want to call it, Mark, his revenge year. I think he's got a lot of critics that he's looking to silence and getting in the mix early in the year would certainly be a way to do that. No doubt. Um, no doubt. And it's cool to see him playing in this event. Um, it's the perfect sort of a place to get a real handle on where the golf swing is because we know – you know, he worked very hard. He played some in the fall. He worked on his technique. He was posting footage, and you saw drills that he was doing a lot of stuff, looking like he was trying to iron out the swing path and really build on that little fade he tries to hit with a very neutral path. Um, but if you want a real barometer on where the ball striking is, you play in the desert in this time of the year. Nice temperatures. The ball's going to fly pretty much the right distance um, midday. Uh, there's no wind, so you can get a real feel for where's the ball launching, how's it coming out, what's the spin like with the driver. And so that's why so many of these guys go out there and they practice there and they play there. So I think this is a great start for Justin. And he can go, yeah, this this was something nice to build on. I feel like, well, because now you can see that everything he's tried to do in practice down there in Florida where perhaps you got crosswinds and stuff, he's like, no, the ball's coming out on the button. And so I feel like it's a really solid way to start the season. And I look for him to build on this. 
The number one player in the world, Scotty Scheffler, got off to a very, very slow start, even par through eight holes at the easiest golf course. He was able to salvage this round, shoot a five under 67, which is going to end up gaining about a half a stroke on the field mark. But it does always look a little weird when you're five under and you are in a tie for 39th. It's Scotty Scheffler. <laughs> It'll be all right. Okay. The, the, Scotty is going to, he just, that's how he plays. He's Tiger-esque in a way. Um, he just puts numbers up when things aren't going that well. He doesn't get too much much before mentally. He just keeps doing his deal because he knows that the way he hits it, he's going to get ample opportunity. And he's probably looking at this going, all right, got away with five under, didn't have my best stuff. I'm in the mix. I'm five back. But I know there's going to be nine holes, maybe more, where I get in a bit of a run, and I can close the gap pretty fast. And so... Um, you know, he'll be playing, uh, I, I'm sure the TV works out that he'll play at the stadium on Saturday and Sunday. And that's perfect because then you get a feel for the place Saturday, which sets you up for Sunday, which is an advantage. And um, yeah, he'll be around Sunday afternoon. I'm prepared to bet on that. Last guy here is Eric Cole. And I bring him up. He was a popular one and done selection and it was over. Everyone was ripping up their tickets. We were crying in our pillows because Eric Cole was even par through 10 at the stadium course. Then he birdies 11, 12, 14, <laughs> Eagles 16, birdies 18. It is a six under 66. You add it all up. He gains four strokes to the field at the stadium course and was a hero for his last two hours of his round. Wipe your face. I mean, can you get that that grin on yours? You look like a Cheshire cat right now because he's your pick, isn't he? <laughs> of course. But he's also the third most popular pick in the first cut, run your pool one and done. Oh, really? Okay. Well, good picks by you guys. Uh, it's hard not to pick against him. Um, a lot of those golf courses around there kind of welcome a draw. You know, in mo the modern PGA Tour course likes a fade shot where – um, Eric hits this tumbly draw. Um, he's got a beautiful short game. And look, he didn't stumble into that rookie of the year title. I don't care if he's in his late 30s. The guy's a hell of a player. And he's playing with a whole lot of confidence right now. And with all of his skill, and then you add some self-belief to that, I think the world is becoming his oyster. On this very show, when he battled Chris Kirk last year early um, at the Honda Classic, I remember NBC cut to him after he'd made a save, I don't know, on the 15th or 16th or whatever, and they zoomed in on his face. And this was a kid who was playing great, part of the storyline, incredible story, mom, dad, or you know the whole thing. And they looked at this guy, and he just, he looked like a movie star, just with the chiseled features and the blue eyes and the great game. And I was like, wow, this kid that I once saw in college is is legit. And now he's proved, him, proved it to himself. And more than anything else, he's got right back in the saddle after getting the award. He's playing great. I, I, I think this continues. I really do. I, I'm, I, I'm not the betting guy you are. I'd probably lean on you for information and advice on this. But he will contend for events this year. Uh, of the, if he stays injury-free, which is, look, he's dealt with stuff given the uh, Addison's disease and the diabetes and stuff that he has. But he's dealt with that stuff. He dealt with everything. And I just feel like he's he's a champion in waiting now. Yeah, very resilient, playing great golf. Seems like it's just a matter of time. Josh, hit us with those betting odds. And this is, uh, it's it's a little bizarre because these guys are all over the place. Uh, so you've got to take that into account. But Patrick Cantlay and Xander Shoffley lead the way here. They are both eight under par. They both played at La Quinta. And Cantlay is five and a half to one. Xander is six and a half to one. Scotty played the same course. He is 12 to 1. So Scotty Scheffler, who is in at 5 under, is 12 to 1. Alex Norin, who is in at 10 under, and they both played the same golf course, is are both 12 to 1. So basically, Vegas saying that over the next three rounds, Scotty Scheffler is five shots better than Alex Norin is, which is kind of crazy to think about. Minwoo Lee and Justin Thomas, both at 16 to 1. Eric Cole, Sung JM, Siwoo Kim at 22 to 1. Mark, this is just it's chaos. We're trying to organize the chaos a little bit. Uh, it's tough to do. It is tough to do because obviously you're playing the three different courses and you'll have a better beat on the handicapping of the players come Saturday evening when they've all played everything. Um, the weather is supposed to stay the same. 
the whole locations will be the same naturally. So um, you just look at guys that are playing well and guys that are comfortable. So uh, I find it hard to avert my eyes from a Scheffler. You know, if I'm, I'm with Vegas. Even though he's well back, he will be around. Um, Eric Cole will be around. Um, si Wu has been good year before. Um, so look, I mean, you could throw a net over those. I, I feel like there are names over there that are probably being missed or that aren't on that list. But, you know, we'll see Saturday evening. That's when you'll know better. Yeah, Eric Cole shooting a 66 at the stadium course. Minwoo Lee shooting a 65 at the Nicholas tournament course are very, very intriguing for me. Obviously, um, we'll see how the rest of the week shakes out and we'll be here for each and every round along the way. But Mark, any final thoughts before we get out of town? Yeah, how's my one and done pick doing, please? Who Poston, right? Yes, sir. He was finishing his round, so he got in. Five under, 67 yeah. at the stadium course, which is going to be three shots better than the field average. That's what you yeah. want. And he was – I made the mistake of looking early because he was over par, and I was like, oh, no. And then when I sat down and watched some golf, I saw him nearly jar one on the par five, the 16th. And I was like, okay, here we go. Boy's back. That's he good doubled news. six. So yeah. he was two over through six, clawed it back immediately with birdies at seven and eight, and then, yeah, got got, got on a little run on the back. I happened to switch on my phone as he finished six. I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> perfect time. <laughs> oh, perfect. All right, we'll be back Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night to recap the rest of the American Express. Big thanks to producer Josh, who does all the hard work behind the scenes. Mark Immelman, you can find at Mark underscore Immelman. You can find me at Rick Run Good. This has been The First Cut. We'll catch you next time.